Hello viewers and welcome to another edition of our literary program. Today in this program we have a very special guest. Well, I'll not uh, actually keep you too long but then I need to introduce this very special person to you. We have the none other but Janice Parriott with us. Now this is a program that we wish to do from Doordarshan for a long time but because you know Janice would always travel and she would not be here really in Shillong. Well, we couldn't really catch hold of the Janius Parrot, and finally we did. Well, who doesn't know her? Well, yeah. she is a Shillong person and uh, born and brought up here. And she studied in uh, the institution called Loreto Convent here in Shillong. Thereafter, she went to Delhi St. Stephen's and, uh, and of course in London also, she's uh, studied her further studies. Currently, she teaches uh, creative writing as well as history in Ashoka University in New Delhi. Well, uh, Janice has been writing and her recent book has just been launched this year, but she's been writing for a long time. And her first book that came out, I remember reading it, and that was Boats on Land. And thereafter, she continued to write and Boats on Land, incidentally, uh, was awarded with the Sahitya Academy uh, Award uh, for the Young Writers Award. This book also got the a crossword book award in the year 2013. So there you have it and you can understand, well, we will traverse through her writings, through her experiences and so much more. So in case you have just joined us here, stay with us because this will be a very interesting conversation. So let me go ahead and introduce Janice Parriott to you. A very warm welcome, Janice. Hi, Hi, and thank you so much yeah, for having me and, here. Yeah, and thank you so much, Janice. Indeed, it's a pleasure for all of us mm -hmm. to be able to find you here in Shillong, to be yeah. able to come to your home, this beautiful little uh, patch that we mm -hmm. are sitting here, mm -hmm. and being able to talk to you face to face. What a pleasure it is to have you in our program. It's a delight. Thank you. So, like always, Janice, we will uh, you know, go down memory lane. Okay, as I said in the, in the introduction that you are a product of Loreto Convent, Shillong, mm -hmm. right? And thereafter you went for further studies outside. But then, how much of Loreto has come into you to make the person that you are today? Well, my schooling years were actually divided between Loreto Convent and the Assam Valley School. Um, and they were very, very different experiences, of course, because Loreto, as you know, is you know, our beloved convent school here in Shillong and AVS is a boarding school mm -hmm. in, uh, you know, the vastness of Assam. Um, but of course, I have the fondest uh, memories of being in school um, at Loretta Convent. Um, dear friends who loved reading as much as I did, who loved making up little stories. Um, and, you know, we would uh, sit and exchange books. We would run to the library. Right, yeah. and I was just coming to that. Our beautiful exactly. library. I remember the wooden floors. Exactly. Right? exactly. The polished wooden floor. Yeah. Absolutely. So I think, um, you know, my love for the English language, for English literature. Um, I had wonderful teachers right. there. Um, right. And so all of that, of course, helped very much to... Yeah. Um, shaped me into the what person I am and right. of course the writer that I am mm -hmm. as well. In fact, one of the stories in Boats on Land mm -hmm. is set in um, Loretta Convent. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so at what point of time, you know, from your childhood was there always this interest for you to write down little, little stories or pen down something? At what point of time you thought that you could become a writer, a serious writer that too? Right. I think I grew up at a time uh, in India when it wasn't easy to imagine yourself mm -hmm. as a writer. Mm -hmm. I think at that point um, our elders, our parents were very worried about you know the, the safety um, of, uh, uh, of a career, mm -hmm. of a solid career um, and the arts and writing and music were deemed a bit you know unstable and a little precarious. Mm -hmm. So 
I did grow up, grow up in an environment like that. So even though I did do a lot of writing at home, mm -hmm. I wrote little stories to yeah. show to my parents mm -hmm. and to my family. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't quite imagine myself as a writer until much, much later. Okay. I think when things had changed a little bit in India, when there was perhaps more space for the arts, whether that meant there was social media, there were magazines to write for. Um, so it really, uh, you know, my uh, imagination of myself as a writer aligned with, I think, a shift in uh, the kind of art spaces that were available in the country. Mm -hmm. Writing, people would still say that it is, it doesn't pay unless you become somebody yeah. very famous, right? Yeah. I mean, uh, so, so how much of that, uh, you know, inspiration you got, mm. encouragement you got from the home also yeah. later? Because, you know, if you were not a writer today, what would you yeah. have been otherwise? I mean, I would have loved to imagine myself as a potter. Okay. I would have loved to make ceramics. Uh -uh. Um, I think, although I'm not quite sure that's any less precarious than being a writer. Uh -huh. um, but there was a tremendous amount of support, not just from the home, mm -hmm. of course, from mm -hmm. my parents, my aunts, uh, my siblings and cousins, but also from the larger community of writers mm -hmm. here in Shillong mm -hmm. and elsewhere. I think mm -hmm. that's what really helped because mm -hmm. Um, you know, they were mentors and friends who, I think, um, who showed me that it was possible, yeah. that with a bit of support, with a bit of bolstering, mm -hmm. um, I could also be a writer, mm -hmm. um, if not full-time, mm -hmm. it's very difficult mm -hmm. to be a full-time yeah. artist right. um, anywhere, mm -hmm. I think, but at least to follow the writing with uh, a dedication and a passion that, you know, would yield some kind of meaningful uh, result. Now let's come to the first book. I mean, this was a book when it came out. Which year was it exactly? 12, uh, 2013 or 2012. No, 2012. 12, yeah. I, I, I lose yeah. track of time right, now. Right. Yes. Uh, you know, first what intrigues me is the title of the book, mm. Boats on Land. Yeah. Why this title? <laughs> so Boats on Land, as you know, is a collection of short, short stories, stories yeah. and they are short stories that are very deeply rooted mm -hmm. in this particular place. Okay. So Shillong, Sora, mm. Pockets of Assam, where I grew up, they are very geographically lo located, mm. but they are also about characters, people, mm. young people especially, who perhaps are a little bit lost. Mm and who perhaps are a little bit adrift. Mm -hmm. And so like boats on land, mm. they're slightly awkward, mm. slightly not quite in their own place okay. yet, who haven't okay. perhaps found their place to be uh -huh. in the world. Wow. I mean, look at the thought that went behind and that's why you came up with this catchy Yes, catchy it's also title. The, the title of one of the stories, one um, of the main the stories. stories, it's the yeah. titular story. Right, yeah. right. right. So this is a collection of short stories, but then you have written novels also, yes. right? Uh, your next work, I'm not too sure if I'm going by the sequence, Seahorse, a yes. novel, yeah? Yes. That's the second, uh, yeah. th that's a proper novel. Yes, I was yeah? very nervous about uh. it because your first novel, uh. you know, is quite a, a big thing, mm. I think, for a writer, moving especially mm. from short stories. And um, I think I was very aware that I was writing a novel mm. and I was trying to be very serious okay. and very sort of profound okay. about things. Mm. I think that's shifted a lot. Mm -hmm. I think I take it much more playfully mm. now, now yeah. and lightly in yeah. a way that allows me to have more fun right. while writing. But Seahorse was a very serious work okay. of fiction for me. <laughs> okay. How long did it take actually for you? How long does it generally take for you to it write? It really varies. Okay. I mean, I feel like every book actually takes all your, all your life to write uh -huh. because all of your experiences, all of the things that you learn the people that you meet, the mm. places that you visit, they all play a part in, mm. in um, you know, in making you who you are mm. and consequently in shaping the stories that you tell. Right. Um, so Boats on Land are stories from here, folk tales especially, mm. that I've heard ever since I was a child. Ch yeah. Mm. Um, with everything the light touches yeah. which is the newest yeah. book it's taken me almost 10 years oh. of research and thinking mm. and writing okay. so it really does depend on the project mm. nine chambered heart was a quick nine months oh. and it was done uh -huh. you know so yeah, yeah. it really depends mm. 
you know, these days, Janice, I think, uh, of course, there are serious readers also who are yeah. into books, like they're like literal bookworms. Yeah. But the young generation, they are so much into technology, you yeah. know, <laughs> games and the mobiles. Yeah. Are they reading? You know, I'm not too worried about that, that to be yeah, honest. Yeah. I think that our world of storytelling mm. is so rich and mm. so filled with potential mm. and exists so much outside books. Yes. Uh, I know I'm a writer and mm. perhaps I shouldn't be saying this, mm. but I think that books are just one way that we can access stories in our lives right. um, and that we have we're so incredibly lucky to have mm. a wealth of storytelling mm. traditions mm. around us. We come from a place where we are embedded in a rich and vibrant oral storytelling mm. um, history. Mm. So I feel as though, you know, this obsession with, is, is, you know, are people reading, are books dying, mm. will nobody be reading anymore, is a little bit of a Western Im imposition, mm -hmm. uh, a colonial Im imposition on parts of the world that perhaps have held varied and rich storytelling traditions that exist outside the pages of a book. For example, you have podcasts now, you have Instagram stories. I think it's really exciting to be alive and creating uh, at a point And that's why we have ebooks also. Exactly, yeah, yeah. right? We have, you know, we have so many ways to tell yeah. stories and I think the young are accessing different ways of storytelling and that's I think it's perfect yeah, fine. Yeah. Our country especially, there's a lot of young people. Our, our, yeah. our country it is said to be filled with 45% uh, and uh, yeah. above our young lot. So they should be reading because writers like yeah. you are there. You know, not just you, there are others also who are writing marvelous books <laughs> and they must be, they should pick I, up a book. I would love read. for that yeah. to happen but I mm. don't hold it against mm. anybody if mm. they enjoy video games for mm -hmm. example or if they enjoy watching movies mm -hmm. instead. Mm. You know, I I think we have differently minded storytelling brains and we enjoy different kinds of storytellings that are particular to ourselves. Mm -hmm. So, okay. you know, if you don't feel like reading a big fat book, it's okay as long as you are accessing a rich storytelling life otherwise. Yeah, yeah. and talking about big fat book, you know, your uh, the, the recent one, the recent, yes. it looks quite fat. Yes. <laughs> and it took you 10 years, you said? Yeah, almost 10 years. Almost 10 yes. years. Yes. I mean, look at your consistency. I mean, uh, you research, of course, you are, you have to be very sure of the information that you're putting, right? Yeah. And it takes, and look at the patience that you have. So yeah. an author or a writer or a poet has to have a lot of consistency as well yeah. as patience, right? Yeah, that's so true. And mm -hmm. I think the discipline to mm -hmm. actually um, show up at your desk mm -hmm. when you're working on mm -hmm. a book, mm -hmm. to show up at your desk every day. Oh. There's no way out. I mean, I wish there was a shortcut. Mm -hmm. I wish there was a checklist mm -hmm. that, you know, I could hand out to say, oh, just do these things and mm -hmm. you'll have a book. Mm -hmm. But it takes exactly that. It takes patience and consistency and the discipline to turn all of those things into some kind of tangible, mm. um, you know, product. Exactly, you know? Yeah. exactly. Because this is you, you, your, you know, whatever you are and all the knowledge that you had, all the hard work comes out in the print form. Yes. Right. So it is consistency, patience and discipline, as yes. you said, right. Yes. There's no shortcut to becoming a writer. No, there yeah. really isn't. isn't. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think, mm. you know, people perhaps often have this mm. rather glamorous mm. idea of what a writer does, mm -hmm. you know, sort of make cups and cups of tea and look poetically out of windows. <laughs> but that's really not true. Not true. It's okay. more like a job. Mm. You show up at your desk at nine in the morning, mm. you finish at seven in the evening. Oh, and okay. if you're stuck on a paragraph that mm. you're not happy with then you work even more and then you mm. collapse and then the next day it's repeat you know yeah. so and sometimes you know when you're asleep and some 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 thought <laughs> comes do you wake up in the night and again pen it down or take a little note i'm quickly? not one of those writers <laughs> okay. that i think because i'm so exhausted <laughs> okay. by the end of the mm. day that mm. i just sort of mm. you know yeah. sleep yeah. with abandonment <laughs> <laughs> okay. and next day with a fresh mind again yes get back exactly to yeah. exactly now talking about your other book that is called the nine chambered heart yeah why nine chambers? Heart has four <laughs> chambers, I always thought. It does, yeah. but many secret chambers, I ah, think. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> secret metaphorical mm -hmm. chambers. Mm -hmm. I think we um, 
the title of the book uses um, you know the image or the symbol of the heart as a metaphor for all the people that we carry mm -hmm. um, in our lives. Right. Um, it is specifically a book about that. It's mm -hmm. a book about love. Okay. It's a book about the stories that we carry about the people we love. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, the four chambered heart expands and expands to accommodate, you know, the people that we encounter, the people that we fall in love with, mm -hmm. the people that we become friends with. Right. Um, and so that's yeah, why. Yeah, wonderful, wonderful. Because you know, those who, who have not read the books or maybe will just now pick up a book yeah. of yours yeah. to read will be a little fascinated by the, uh, yeah, by the title so. itself, right? Yeah. Now let's come back to your latest uh, release. When, mm -hmm. when did you uh, just? Uh, October, October, end yeah. of October. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. And this is called Everything the Light Touches. Yeah. Again, the title. And what does this, uh, what is this book all about? Well, this book is a quartet of travel narratives. Mm -hmm. And um, there are four travelers, mm -hmm. uh, and they belong to different continents mm -hmm. and to different time periods. Mm -hmm. So we travel across space mm -hmm. and geography mm -hmm. and temporality. But I guess they are all brought together by. Uh, certain similar things, uh, one of them being curiosity, okay. um, another a search for knowledge, mm -hmm. uh, another a search for the self. Um, and so these similarities, I hope, echo through mm -hmm. all of these mm -hmm. narratives um, in the book. Mm -hmm. um, I think the light in the title is the light of knowledge, okay. is the light of curiosity, mm -hmm. the light that falls on us every day, um, that falls on leaves around us every day, that nourishes us and mm -hmm. keeps us mm -hmm. uh, alive. Mm -hmm. um, you know, as you were speaking, I just uh, thought that, you know, we, we, we all think that we belong to this, we are, I am yeah. this so and so, I come from this community, you are from here, yeah. we are different people. Yeah. Yet when we all come together, we are just one big fat story. Right. That's exactly yeah. it. Um, yeah. I think this is the book that's trying to mm. gesture towards mm. that, to mm. say that actually if you step back far enough, mm. you will see that we are one singular story exactly. from the beginning of the universe mm. to the moment that the universe began, the very second that it mm. started to now, mm. we are one big story. Mm. And so to divide and to segregate and to categorize is, I think, an act of cruelty mm -hmm. and harshness mm -hmm. when we should actually be looking for communion and unity yeah. and similarity. Exactly, exactly, because at the root of it, we are all similar. Exactly. But then we somehow get uh, diversified, divided because of elements sometimes which are beyond our control too. Yeah. And we allow that to control us. Yeah. And that's how we get divided, yeah, right? Absolutely. Yeah? Yeah. So Janice, let's, let's hear you read something now from maybe your first work. All right, yeah? sure. Yeah. Be happy to. Yeah. Um, just the very beginning of the first story in um, Boats on Land. Yeah. How do I explain the word kaktin? Say it out loud. Ka ktin. The first, a short, sharp thrust of air from the back of your throat. The second, a lift of the tongue and a delicate tangle of tip and teeth. For I mean not what's bound by paper. Once printed, the word is feeble and carries little power. It wrestles with ink and topography and margins, struggling to be what it was originally. Spoken, unwritten, unrecorded, old, they say, as the first fire, free to roam the mountains, circle the hearth, and fall as rain. We who had no letters with which to etch our history have married our words to music, to mantras that we repeat until lines grow old and wither and fade away, until they are forgotten and there is silence. How do I explain something untraceable, the perfect weapon for a crime, light as pine dust, echoing with alibis, 
conjuring out of thin air the ugly, the beautiful, the terrifying. Eventually, like all things, it is unfathomable. So how do I explain? Perhaps it's best, as they did in the old days, to tell a story. Look at your language. I mean, this was a book that you've written in 2012, and yet your language is so deep, you know. So <laughs> have you. you also been reading since your childhood? Because, you know, it is, I mean, whenever I've spoken to other yeah. authors, they tell me that reading is very important. So have you also had that in you? I've had the luxury and the privilege mm -hmm. to read um, all through my life, mm -hmm. but I've had the greater luxury and the greater privilege of knowing a lot of very good storytellers. Okay. So uh, I'm often asked, who are your mm -hmm. literary influences? Mm -hmm. And I, I will always answer that my greatest literary in influences, most of them don't know how to read or write. Mm -hmm. They have never written a book in their lives and they probably never will. Mm -hmm. But they told the most stories. marvelous stories. Mm -hmm. This is what we love to do here. We mm -hmm. sit, we yathokhana, mm -hmm. we sit around the shula yeah. at weddings and funerals and we tell stories. Mm -hmm. And I think that before we are good readers, mm -hmm. I think we need to be good listeners, listeners. to be a good writer. Mm -hmm. Because you need to hear language, yeah. you need to hear pace, you need to hear rhythm. You need to also hear structure. How does a good storyteller tell a story? You know, where do they begin? Where do they end? How do they fill the middle with so much energy? And that kind of special, um, you know, uh, characteristic of orality is what I try to bring to my writing. It's, you know, the greatest debt that I owe to the place that I come from that I have you know, I've grown up with these incredible storytellers. Um, even now, my most recent book is dedicated to those who told stories. Um, I don't think I'd be a writer if I didn't have that many wonderful storytellers in my life. I mean, you are a wonderful writer, a poet. You're also Thank a very you. humble person, I think, you know, because you're giving the credit to somebody else, though it is, you heard, but then you're putting them, penning them to words yourself, right? And how wonderful, you know, and that should remain, isn't it? That storytelling that our yes. grandmothers of or, course. yeah, grand, of yeah, grandmothers or grandfathers would take all the grandchildren around them. Yeah. Sometimes maybe because of the pace that we are living in today yeah. and the technology that we are in today, maybe, uh, you know, the, the elders don't have enough time yeah. for their children to yeah. spare that, those yeah. precious moments. And you don't know where you are, which child is picking up what. Yes. Yeah? You never know. Yeah, you never know. <laughs> now, coming back to your writing again, Janice, uh, this is your first book. But then mm -hmm. with your, uh, you know, the latest one, Everything That Light Touches, how much have you matured you personally feel over the years? <sighs> because they say, you know, self, uh, being a self-critic yeah. is very important. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't matter what others say, <laughs> but uh, you know what you are doing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think... Um that's a very good question. Um, I think, as I said, I've uh, learned to be slightly more playful with my writing, slightly more uh, light in some ways, but at the same time also undertaking far more challenging projects. So I'm not quite sure how those two things sit together, but that's uh, what's happened. I think um, I've become slightly more interested in vaster, bigger stories, vaster strokes of stories. But I think what I've also learned um, over these, uh, you know, these years of writing is that writing is an extremely collaborative act. I think we are often uh, given the image of the, you know, the solo genius artist or the solo genius writer. And I think I want to dismantle that right. image a bit because none of these books could have been written without, you know, the abundant help of uh, and generosity of other people, family, mm -hmm. editors, friends, um, other writers. I think I've grown more and more to appreciate that, mm -hmm. that, you know, your own part in this mm -hmm. might be significant, mm -hmm. but even more significant okay. are the people mm -hmm. around you who feed into yes. uh, a work. Mm -hmm. 
I think that's what I've kind of grown up mm -hmm. uh, to know better. Mm -hmm. But I also do think that I'm always becoming a writer. Mm -hmm. I don't think that, you know, there's some summit that you climb and you stake a flag and you say, I've arrived mm -hmm. as a writer. Mm -hmm. I think you're always, always learning yeah. and always, um, I don't know, you're always uncertain yeah. sometimes. So, so, so does it mean that if you, uh, 2022, and we go back to 2012, yeah. would you have written Boats on Land a little differently than... Maybe after you revise, after you read it yourself? I think, or would you leave it? I think I would that? leave them be. I think those stories mm -hmm. are of a particular place mm -hmm. of, and a particular time and of, also of a particular point in my life. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't wish to, to yeah, change that. Change that right. um, but um, I think, uh, as I was saying, you know, you're always learning to be a writer. Exactly. You never become a writer mm -hmm. one day and, you know, remain that way. Mm -hmm. No, that, that I would also agree with you, you know, yeah. because uh, life is a continuous uh, knowledge, you know, you thirst exactly. for it, right? Exactly. And you continuously look for it. Yeah, and right? you change no and your end. stories yeah. change exactly. and your books change. Right, right. Yeah. You also have delved uh, to some extent into poems. Yes. Right? Tell us yes. a little bit about that. I think that's quite a natural instinct mm. for people from here mm -hmm. to be drawn towards poetry mm. because of our you know, incredibly rich oral inheritance mm -hmm. um, because Khasi itself is a language of musicality. Mm. Um, it has wonderful rhythms and rhymes and, you know, words that go together so well and listening to someone speak Khasi mm -hmm. well mm -hmm. is like listening to poetry, mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. So I've noticed that, you know, for a lot of young mm -hmm. writers and more established writers here as well, yeah, yeah. Um, we're naturally drawn to poetry because of the kind of ear that we have for poetry and I think perhaps that's why I'm also drawn to writing poems, to um, slipping um, a few into, you know, a book. So between uh, the two, which is your first love? Oh, both, because they do such different things okay. and they aspire to such different things and you just have to find the right moment at which to use one or the other. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. You have also got these awards, these recognitions. In fact, your uh, book, The Nine Chambered Heart, has mm -hmm. been published in 10 languages, including yes. German, French, Spanish and Italian. Yes. Must be feeling satisfying, fulfilling, yeah. isn't it? Awards and recognitions also eggs you on. It gives you that yeah. encouragement, right? Yeah, there is a bolstering yeah. and a sense of support. Mm -hmm. Um, and a sense of recognition, of mm -hmm. course, but yeah. more than... To do, to do further, to go yes, on. Yes, on, that right? yeah. it gives you the impetus and yes. the energy to begin that next project. Mm -hmm. Or when you're having a particularly bad writer day um, and you're sitting and staring at a blank mm -hmm. page or a blank screen, then it perhaps gives you that little bit of motivation to continue. Um, so for sure, you know, all of that has been very, very bolstering and much appreciated okay. for sure. Okay, I'm sure in the days to come there will be many more and you'll continue Thank to you. write. You're so young yourself and there's so much, you know, of yeah. writing ahead of you, I'm sure. You. Lastly, as we are almost coming to mm -hmm. an end to this conversation, mm -hmm. you know, uh, what is the kind of message, a little short message you would like yeah. to give uh, to our viewers who are watching you today? Right. Because to so many, you are their inspiration. Yeah. I mean, you don't know it, but you are. Right? They so look sweet. up to you. They look up to you. So what is those kind words or encouragement you would like to give? And of course, we will wind up with you reading uh, a passage or two from your latest work. All right. Well, I will uh, take the liberty of sharing the best piece of writing advice that I ever received. And I know there's a lot of writing advice out there, especially on the Internet. But I think I would ignore all of that and perhaps just hold this close to your heart. Um, the best bit of writing advice that I received that I want to share with you um, is that no one else can tell your story. You are this incredibly unique um, amalgamation and coming together of experiences, the people you've known, the places that you've visited, the kind of feelings that you've had. Um, you know, they are very particularly yours, your family history, your ancestral heritage. No one else on the planet shares that with you. And that makes your story um, already unique and worth um, telling. 
Wonderful, yeah. wonderful. I'm sure, you know, this, what you've said, yeah. has touched a chord I somewhere. So. Thank you so much. And so, Janice, would we end, would we, uh, like, sure. like to end by you reading the last? Sure, yeah? of course. This is also just a short little passage from the beginning of the book and we usually call this the prologue but I like to call it a song. Yeah? Let us wait, let us listen. We tell this story often and in the telling it is different every time. But that, you see, is the nature of stories. There is always a tree, always a tiger, always a small bird that knows the secrets of the forest and helps humankind. The rest, the rest is smoke that never curls the same way twice. We tell this story around a hearth. Come, gather by the fire. What will it be tonight? A tale of moral caution, say the elders, of reaching too far, too high. But the children, the children plead for something lighter, where giants turn into mountains and their baskets into boulders. No, say the lovers, tell us about the man who played the flute amidst the branches, so sweet and so clear, and won the heart of the queen. Tonight, tonight we tell the tale of creation, the one in which a tree is a golden ladder linking earth to sky. Why, ask the children, why? So that the first tribes of our celestial people could wander freely, working their fields below until the evening, climbing up to rest in the house of God at night. Listen now to how the tree, the tallest in the world tree, was felled. How seven tribes were rendered earthbound. How its branches smacked the lands of the south, laying them flat and rich with the mulch of foliage. How the trunk crashed and carved our hills. Look how they bear the mark through all the ages still. Listen. Listen, for a story told once may not be told again. Hmm. Wonderful. Thank you so much. But then I can't help to let you go without asking you. Yes. You have a cat you have named. <laughs> it has a number, multiple names. It has multiple names yeah. because he refuses to stay fixed to one name. <laughs> Depending on his mood. Okay. <laughs> I just came across that and I found it <laughs> fascinating. I thought I must ask you this yes, question. Yes, too. Kitty is usually called, but he responds to, to other names or he chooses also. to ignore as well whenever he wishes to. Okay. Fantastic <laughs> talking to you, Janice. I mean, Thank it's you. been such a lovely time that Thank we had. You. I'm sure that, you know, this kind of a feeling that we both felt uh, has radiated and the viewers will be watching this program or are watching this program yeah. felt the same. I hope Thank so. Thank you for your time. We wish you all the very best, Janice. May you continue to make yourself proud, your family proud, this Thank land you. proud, the country proud. May you continue to write. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you. <laughs> that was Janice Parrott for you. Wasn't it this a wonderful conversation that each one of you out there watching this program also enjoyed? Well, I thoroughly did. I'm sure you did as well. Pick up the next book that you read and make sure it is of Janice Parriott's. Well, until next time, from both of us here from this uh, beautiful, a little overcast condition uh, in here in uh, Janice's house, we take uh, adieu from you. And until next time, from the both of us here, it's wishing you goodbye. <laughs>